I want to welcome everyone. I'm Matt Sheehy. I'm one of Flowstone's customer success managers and welcome you to our monthly customer training. Um, brief agenda for the day. I'm going to introduce the topic of the day, go through some of the logistics about today's session. Uh, we do have a brief set of slides and then we'll move into the live demo. So again, the topic for today is the overlay steps within our data migrator tool. Uh, we'll do a brief intro to the data migrator tool itself for those who are not familiar with it. Then we'll move into how to use data, data migrator step by step. As part of that, we'll be discussing the overlay steps. Um, I'll talk about how you maintain the relationship with your data during the data migration process using these overlay steps. And then lastly, we'll go into a live demo to show you everything that I just talked about. From a housekeeping standpoint, I do have Q&A listed here on the agenda, but rather than have it at the end, you actually have the opportunity to ask questions at any time via the Q&A button on the Zoom panel. And the customer success team members that are joining me today, they'll either answer your questions in real time or follow up if a takeaway is needed to provide further details. So with that, why don't we jump right in Again, uh, kind of a high level overview for Data Migrator. For those that are not familiar, um, it is a tool that we offer that allows you to take a subset of the data from your production and migrate the data to your sandboxes or any other org. Uh, using Data Migrator, you can migrate the data between any two orgs, and this would include a developer sandbox, a partial or full data sandbox, and or your production org. During the data migration process, you can select to have Data Migrator either insert or upsert records in the target org. Uh, when using Data Migrator, you're going to install it in the source org only from which the data is migrated. It's not re required to install Data Migrator in the target org. Data Migrator is going to move data directly from the source org to the target without any intermediary platform or system. This is going to ensure that your data is always safe and secure. And we do now include out of the box uh, CPQ template sequence with more than 80 data sets that can be used to migrate all of your CPQ data. This template can be modified to meet your org's specific needs. And as always, there is data masking capability available for use during the data migration process. And I'll show you uh, how to use some of that. In terms of the use cases, the main use cases for Data Migrator, uh, you may know that when Salesforce creates a sandbox for development, it does not include any of the data from your production org in it. And without proper application data, it can definitely be challenging to build and test applications in your developer sandbox. However, with Data Migrator, we can quickly populate records from the source org to the target org, thus eliminating this challenge. Also, if you have a dev sandbox that's been refreshed, you can use Data Migrator for data seeding purposes. Or if you have, for instance, a project that has a lot of configuration data, you can use Data Migrator to quickly move the config data between any of your orgs. So how do you use Data Migrator? Pretty simple five steps I'm gonna go through right now. Uh, first, you create your data set. This will be used to select the records from an object that need to be migrated. The data sets are created on top of your custom objects and standard objects, and they help to select the records from an object that need to be migrated. In other words, the data sets really helps to create a smaller set of data for migration. For example, a data set could be uh, select all accounts in the state of New York with assets more than $5 billion. So after you create your data set, then you're going to um, create your sequence. And a sequence is a particular relationship group of custom objects and standard objects that, be connect, that can be connected within your Salesforce org. A sequence is essentially a template that can be defined once, and then you can actually use it over and over again to migrate data between your source and your target orgs. Uh, when you set up a sequence, it allows you to quickly move over the exact data you need, especially on your especially on data that you plan to move over on a regular basis. And we'll be drilling down further into this step in a few minutes in regards to the overlay steps in particular. So more to come on this. Um, the next step is, the third step is to view the record count. So this is gonna provide you with a preview of what your migration will look like once it's been executed. You'll be provided with the 
exact number of records that will migrate that will be migrated in each level of the hierarchy. After you've created your data set, created your sequence, and viewed the expected record count in the sequence, you'll want to set your target org. Um, everything I just talked about up to this step was really in regards to the data and where it was coming from. And now we're going to shift on where we're migrating the data to. So this step allows you the opportunity to uh, disable certain components as well. So you'll see the, uh, the toggle buttons here in the middle of the screen. Uh, perhaps you're migrating some very old records from one org to another, and you created some new validations after these records were created in the original Salesforce org. If you did the migration as is, they would fail the validation. But this, within this step, it allows you the ability to disable certain component types associated with the object in the sequence. For example, you could disable all the validation rules associated with accounts. Or if you had a process builder or workflow associated with the contact object, you could be sending out emails. You don't want those going out as part of the data migration. So you could disable the workflows, the process builders, triggers, et cetera, before doing the migration. Then do the migration, and after they've been disabled, you can then re-enable them post-migration. And again, I'll show you how all this works um, as part of the demo. And then lastly, uh, if the number of records pulled at each level uh, meets your requirements and you've set your target org, you're then ready to migrate the data. And again, I'll go into this in more detail uh, during the demo. But for now, I want to circle back on that second step where we set up our sequence. So here we're going to drill down further into the fo and focus on how we maintain those relationships within your data. Again, as a reminder from a high level, what does data, data migrator do? Takes a subset of the data from your prod org and migrates the data to your sandboxes. The data migrator overlay steps, those are used to ensure that all of your parent-child relationships and records are respected and will be automatically captured during your migration process. So let's dig in and show you how to use this feature. So to start, there's two different kinds of overlay steps. Uh, the first one is called the overlay steps designated by this yellow icon. And you're gonna use this when trying to migrate data that contains a top-down hierarchy. For example, if you filtered on account, which is a top-level object, and now you wanna migrate the associated contacts, cases, opportunities, et cetera. When doing this, you'll use the overlay steps and the child record levels to associate with the apparent account. And then only the related records to that subset of parent records would be picked up. The child overlay step designated by this gray icon, it works in the opposite direction. So if you wanted to migrate all opportunities with say more than $1 million, and then all the accounts and contacts, et cetera, that were related to those opportunities. In this example, the main criteria is on the lower level object, the opportunity. The parent of the opportunity would be the associated account or contact. So the child overlay step, it's used to establish that relationship between the parent record and the child record. It determines what parent records should be picked up based on what was picked up at the child level. There's some additional buttons. Um, the other icons are buttons that you'll see that are, you know, to use when help building the sequence. I'm actually gonna go back two slides here to kind of remind you of the picture here. So this is what the sequence builder looks like. Um, and just, I'll get into this a little more detail, but just wanna give you a preview. Um, each row that you see here is a data set that you'll be creating. So we've got these additional buttons here to use. Um, on those rows and kind of go into what each one is. So the first one, this blue button, are the child objects. Uh, these show a list of all the child objects that a particular object could have. So you can select the desired related objects and then the tool will automatically create the data set. The red button, the parent objects, these show just like the name says, all the parent objects. So you can, again, select the desired related objects and it's going to automatically create the data set. Uh, an example here would be if you wanted to create an opportunity data set and add it to the sequence, you'd click on the red icon to see all of the parents of the opportunity. 
those would be the account contacts, so on and so forth. You would select the desired object and the data sets will be created for each opportunity. Uh, the green button here, the recursive step, uh, this creates more of a self lookup, um, allows you to build a hierarchy within the same object. So you can pick up all of the related records that are in the same relationship. An example would be an account record. So, you know, within accounts, you have parent accounts and child accounts. So if you wanted to maintain that relationship, you would use the recursive step. As far as the order of operations, I'm, again, I'm gonna go through this in a demo here shortly, but for a quick high level overview, uh, first you would select the related objects to be added to, to the sequence. So in the picture here, we're selecting the child object. We have our account object here on the first line and we're selecting the child object, which is the opportunity. Next thing we would do is establish the association back to the original object. So again, in this case, we had, uh, we wanna establish the association back to the account, which is the parent object. And you really repeat the step um, over and over until you fully built out your sequence. And you can see how it grows as we go. We started with you know, three lines and now we're down to six. So with that, I'm going to switch gears now into a live demo of Data Migrator. And we're also gonna obviously focus on the overlay steps in particular. So this is our Data Migrator tool. Again, this is a managed package that you would install, install in any of your orgs, uh, not your Flosum org, any of your Salesforce orgs, uh, from which you'd want data pulled from to populate to your lower sandboxes. So to begin the setup of data migrator, you must create your initial data set for the parent object that you'll be adding in the sequences. So to do that, you'd click on data sets and then click new, got it here. Um, you'll enter the name, we'll just put in test data set. You will select, select the object in which you want to create the data set. In this case, we're gonna select asset. And then you'll see that the available fields populated, you're gonna select the fields that you wanna migrate um, from this section here. So asset name was already chosen for us. We'll select account ID and contact ID and install date and how about price. And then one thing I wanna show you here, I mentioned earlier, you can just double click on price and you see how uh, masked came up. So that's how you would simply mask the data during the migration process, just that simple double click. Under the key set information, um, this is where you'll select the primary keys for the object. So this information is used during upserts if you leave the key set information blank, the data set can only be used for inserts, not upserts. So we'll select asset name here. So if I find, so by selecting asset name, what I'm doing, what I'm saying is that if I find an asset in the target org with the same name, instead of inserting, it'll just update that particular record that I find in the target org. Okay, then we have our data set filter criteria. So here, this will allow you to migrate just a subset of records. You can use this filter, uh, you use the, the filters in the section here. So if I wanna say, uh, say asset name equals that number, perhaps I have an asset name here. Yeah. So that's how you, um, again, create the data set and you would simply click save here. I'm not going to save this, but just want to show you how to create the data set. So next we will create the sequence. And so from our home screen here, we can go to sequences. Sorry, <laughs> go to sequence and 
uh, for purposes, again, for purposes of today's demo, I wanna focus on the overlay steps. So we're gonna pick up from an existing sequence. So I'll click into this one. And this is an existing sequence we already have. This is similar to the ones I was showing in the screenshot. We're going ahead and select the edit button. Just wait a second here for this to load. So again, we have these buttons here on each line of the sequence. And again, this is the sequence we already created. I just wanted to highlight the overlay steps. So again, these, these buttons here are, when we're, when we're referring to the overlay steps, what we're talking about. So again, for a reminder, the yellow button, that one is the overlay step. This controls your top-down hierarchy at the child records to associate with the parent record. This gray button here is the child overlay steps. Again, these work in the opposite direction. So this establishes the relationship between your parent records and your child records, determines uh, what parent records should be picked up based on what was picked up at the child level. The blue and the red buttons, um, these are the ones you use to add rows to the sequence. And remember, each row is a data set unto itself. So the blue button, this is going to show a list of all child objects that a particular object could have. And then you can select the desired related objects and automatically create the data set. The red button here, shows all parent objects. You can select the desired related objects and again, automatically create the data set. And again, as I mentioned, the green button, that self lookup, uh, the recursive step, this is how you would build a hierarchy within the same object. So you could pick up all of the related records that are in the self relationship. An example would be, like I mentioned, the account object. You can have parent accounts and their associated child accounts. So let me show you how it works. Again, this sequence allows you to migrate the records and their related records while keeping the relationship between them intact. So for example, I want all accounts and its related contacts. So we can build the child relationship for this using the overlay steps. The first thing I'm gonna do is add the opportunities to the sequence. So on the account line here, I'm gonna click the blue icon and I want to find opportunity. So I'll go add that in, I'll hit close, and you'll see now uh, we have the opportunity. So I don't want all of the associates, but the thing is if I don't want all of them, I only want the ones associated to the accounts being fixed up in step one. So then we, create, we can relate the opportunity back to the account object. So we're going to Go here, and I'm gonna select step one account. So now because I filtered the data set to pick up account one, and then we added the opportunity, it's only gonna pick up the opportunities related to account one. And you can go further down uh, from a relationship standpoint. So again, from opportunity here, I can click on blue icon and we can select uh, opportunity product opportunity line item and add that. So you'll see now we've added a child object of the opportunity line item. And then the next thing we'll do is make the association to pick up all the line items that are associated with the opportunities that are associated with the account. So we'll go here, add it back there. So you can see by doing this over and over again, you can build a hierarchy of relationship of related records. It's, it's not a one level thing. It, it definitely goes, you know, the parent can grab its children and, you know, the, the, the child relation, the, the children records can grab the children's children and so on and so forth. So that's how you create your sequence. So now after you've created your sequence, you're going to want to view the record count. And you're going to do that over here under view record count. And as a reminder, you're always going to want to do this before you start your migration. So at the very least, you'll want to know the number of records that will be migrated 
in each level of the hierarchy. Otherwise, you may run out of storage space during a migration, for instance. So uh, you'll see here the, you know, the view record count is going to be similar to the, the migration screen. So you're going to have uh, an execution name. The sequence we already created uh, is established here. We want to start from the beginning. Some of the options here, this uh, use data obfuscation, you can control whether or not the data gets masked at runtime. And this way, you don't need to create two data sets, for instance, one for masking and one for not. You control that at runtime. But again, this is the view record count screen. It's more of a dry run, so you don't need to worry about these buttons. So we'll go ahead and click Create. Okay, so that is done. So now we can see what was picked up, including the new fields that we added. So these were complete and we have our log here. So that was our, like I said, our dry run. Uh, next thing we'll wanna do is set up our target org. So I wanna go back to our sequence screen here and on the drop down menu, set up the target org. So again, we have all of our objects and every object has all of their associated component types. Um, we can disable certain component types on the screen. For example, if there are validation rules that don't apply or process builders and flows that send emails, you can do that from this screen. So you can simply, uh, oh, sorry, gotta select. You can, val you, can, you can disable those here. Um, when you do click disable, it does create a uh, backup record where everything that was disabled is stored. So I don't want to, um, I'm not going to complete the action here. Because again, this is just the demo environment. I just kind of want to show you each step of the process. So the next step is going to be um, actually performing the migration. So we're back here on our sequence screen and we're going to select migrate data. And now you'll see um, this does look just like when we viewed the record count. You'll recall um, that was just the preliminary step. So it's going to be very similar, except this actually is a new execution. So again, the name of the migration is defaulted. Our selected sequence is here. Again, you can use the data obfuscation if you want to mask the data. You can uh, select use bulk API, for instance, if you know this migration will be over one million records, for instance. Um, you can enable advanced logs, which will give you some additional reporting logs. Um, but for purposes of here, we'll go ahead and select create. So now this is where we're going to connect, or excuse me, this is where we're going to select um, which org we're going to be migrating the data to. So you'd want to uh, select your org. Uh, you know, we can choose the sandbox. And again, this for demo purposes, I'm just going to um, kind of walk you through it. Um, here's where you would uh, authenticate with your target org where the data is going to be presented. Um, but for purposes of the uh, demo, I'm just going to show you the steps. So cancel out of this. And if you, if we had completed uh, the migration, you could go to the execution screen here and it's going to show you again, this is what the, the final step would look like uh, during the process. You could also then from here, you could log into your target org and you would see the data is present there, but you can see all three steps are completed and we do have our log of the migration. So back to uh, PowerPoint here. So um, again, that was data migration. That was the use of the overlay steps. Um, as always, you know, aside from your uh, customer success manager, the success portal is really your knowledge repository for all things Flowsome. Uh, from there, you do have the ability to browse our FAQs, our training articles. Uh, you can watch recordings of past webinars, such as this one, uh, submit Flowsome feature enhancement requests, and you can submit and track uh, your support cases 
for our technical support team. So that really brings us to the end of today's training. Um, we talked about Data Migrator. We talked about how it works, went through some of the use cases and best practices, uh, went a little deeper into the overlay steps and how they work. And then we went through uh, the demo of all of the above. So um, if you have any questions or would like any additional information, you can certainly reach out to your customer success managers and uh, we'll all be happy to help.